The MLB has made some interesting changes over the last few years, and it seems like the rule changes have targeted pitchers more than any other position. To start things off, let's do a recap of three substantial changes in the game. First, we have the crackdown on sticky stuff, otherwise defined as a ban on foreign substances for pitchers. In June of 2021, the MLB took notice to the unusually low batting average across the league. Quite frankly, the game was becoming boring because there wasn't enough offensive action, so they began to investigate. They found that a majority of pitchers were using pine tar or rosin to get a better grip on the baseball and increase their spin rate. These substances were quickly banned, and nowadays the league is pretty strict about checking for grip enhancers at the end of each inning. Next we have the addition of the pitch clock, which was meant to speed up the game. Pitchers now have 15 seconds to throw a pitch when the bases are empty, or 20 seconds to throw a pitch if there's runners on base. If they violate the pitch clock, the batter is automatically given a ball. The timer also applies to the batter. If they're not in the batting box within 30 seconds, they're charged to strike. On paper, the pitch clock is a neutral addition to the game, but it's certainly an added element for pitchers to think about when they're on the mound. Lastly, we have the removal of the shift. Defensive players can no longer set up in ideal positions based on the batter at the plate. Previously, infield shifts could take away gaps or areas of the field where the batter was most likely to hit the ball. Now that this is gone, there's an added element of defensive difficulty, which should theoretically result in more hits. Now that we've recapped, it's clear that pitchers could be getting the short end of the stick here, but let's take a look at the data. I'll start by prefacing that we're still early in the 2023 season, so these stats are subject to change. However, some of the findings are interesting. I spent some time on Baseball Savant comparing pitcher stats from last year to this year. For the sake of time, I looked at the top 18 pitchers in different statistical categories, such as expected batting average, expected slugging, ex-WOBA, and strikeout percentage. In 2022, the top 18 pitchers allowed an expected batting average between 168 and 215. In 2023 so far, the top 18 pitchers are allowing a range between 195 and 229. This is a 16% increase off the minimum in each range. A similar trend is noticeable when we look at expected slugging. In 2022, the top 18 pitchers allowed an expected slugging percentage between 279 and 340. In 2023, the top 18 pitchers are allowing a range between 315 and 374. This represents a 12.9% increase off the minimum in each range. Although we're just under halfway through the season, this data tells us that we're seeing more hits overall and generally more productive at-bats. There's really nothing to write home about when we look at changes in ex-WOBA, ex-ISO, and barrel percentage allowed by the top pitchers, but things get interesting when we look at his strikeout percentages. In 2022, the top 18 pitchers had strikeout percentages between 27.2 and 38.3%. This year, we're seeing a range between 27.1 to 39%, which is about the same. What's most interesting is that last year we had 12 pitchers with a strikeout percentage north of 30%, which really is a lead strikeout upside. This season, there's only 5 pitchers above this mark. We're looking at a 58.3% decrease in pitchers that are striking out approximately one batter per inning. Now, it's too early to tell exactly what's happening with pitching in 2023, but it seems that the best arms in the league are being negatively impacted. Could it be the removal of sticky stuff, the addition of the pitch clock, the removal of the shift, or could it be that batters are better this year than they've been in years past? We'll have to wait and see how things unfold throughout the rest of the season, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. This has been Brad with DFS City, and we'll see you in the next one.